In this video, we're gonna introduce rearrangements of series and prove a classic result involving absolutely convergent series and their rearrangements. So let's start with the definition. So the series BN is said to be a rearrangement of the series AN if there is a bijection from the natural numbers to the natural numbers such that B sub FN equals AN. Great, so in other words, all of the terms of the series B are the same as the terms from series A, but they've been moved around a little bit. And how they've been moved around? Well, they've been moved around via this bijection. That's how you do that carefully. And we're gonna prove this result using the Cauchy criterion, so I wanna go ahead and recall that real quick. So the series AN converges if and only if for all epsilon bigger than zero, there exists a natural number n such that if m and n are bigger than or equal to that natural number, we have the absolute value of a sub m plus one all the way up to a sub n is less than epsilon. So we've used this Cauchy criterion to prove some series convergence tests in a past video, and now we're gonna use it to prove this theorem as well. So let's go ahead and look at what we will prove. So we will prove that if AN is an absolutely convergent series, so in other words, the series formed by the absolute value of the terms converges, and B sub N is a rearrangement of the series A sub N, then the series B sub N converges to the same value as the series A sub N. So let's go ahead and look at the proof of this. So let's suppose that we have the sum of the a n terms equals capital A. So we'll say that's the convergent value. Um, and we'll say that this converges absolutely. So let's go ahead and recall that that immediately implies that the sum of the absolute value of the terms, in other words, the sum of the absolute value of a n also converges. And we're not gonna talk about what value it converges to, but suffice it to say, we're just gonna use the fact that it converges. The next thing that we wanna do is suppose that the sum BN is a rearrangement of the sum AN, and let's say that is via this bijection F, which goes from the natural numbers to the natural numbers. So in other words, B sub F of N equals A sub N, and this is like for all natural numbers N. So this bijection is making our rearrangement. Now, for some more parts of our setup for our proof, we want to set S sub N equal to the partial sum of the series A sub N. So in other words, this is A1 plus all the way up to A N, and now notice, since we know that the sum of the AN terms is equal to capital A, that is equivalent to saying that the limit as N goes to infinity of the partial sums is equal to A. Great, and then let's also set TN equal to the partial sum of the BN terms. So this is gonna be B1 all the way up to BN. Great, and we want to show that the limit as n goes to infinity of tn equals a as well. Great, and so that would prove that the sum of the bn terms was also equal to a. Okay, so now that we've got all of this set up, I'll go ahead and clean this up and we'll launch into the meat of the proof. Now we wanna look at the proof using the notation that we started on the last board. So let's say we're given some arbitrary epsilon bigger than zero. And now we can use the fact that the limit as n goes to infinity of f sub s sub n equals capital A to find some natural number n such that if little n is bigger than or equal to capital N, we have the absolute value of S sub N minus A is less than epsilon over two. So we can make this as small as we want. And how small do we wanna make it? Well, we wanna make it epsilon over two and we'll see why that's the case as we move forward. And I wanna go ahead and point out that our goal eventually 
will be to show that the absolute value of this t sub n minus a is less than epsilon, where perhaps this like index is not n, but it's m, just kind of depending on what we need here. And in fact, we're gonna to need a couple of these capital N's. So I'm gonna go ahead and index this one N sub one. So in other words, if little n is bigger than or equal to N sub one, we know that Sn minus A is less than epsilon. Okay, great. Now the next thing that we wanna do is use the convergence of the absolute value of the terms along with the Cauchy criterion to build the rest of our parts. So let's go ahead and write down what we mean by that. So let's use the convergence of the sum of the absolute value of the terms a sub n to find an n2, which is a natural number, such that if n is strictly bigger than m, which is strictly, which is bigger than or equal to capital N2, then the absolute value of a sub m plus one plus all the way up to the absolute value of a sub n is less than epsilon over two. And I wanna point out that in the Cauchy criterion over here, there are no absolute values on the inside, but there's a big absolute value on the outside. But what we're doing is applying the Cauchy criterion to this series involving absolute value terms. So that's why we would have absolute values on the inside, but the absolute values on the inside make it so that we don't need the absolute values on the outside. Okay, so now we've got this set up right here. Now the next thing that we wanna do is set capital N equal to the maximum of little n, a capital N1 and capital N2. And we want to set capital M equal to the maximum of f of 1 all the way up to f of n. Great. And so that's going to ensure that we're far enough out into our rearranged series that everything works out okay. Okay, so now that we've got all of these parts constructed, let's go ahead and finish it off. Now we're ready to finish this off. So let's go ahead and suppose that little m is bigger than or equal to capital M, that capital M that we constructed on the last board, and we wanna look at the absolute value of T sub m minus A. Hopefully that is less than epsilon. That would show us exactly what we wanted to have. In other words, it would show us that this sum of BN equals capital A, just like the sum of AN and those are rearrangements of each other. So we're gonna first add zero to the inside of the absolute values and that zero will take the form of S sub capital N. So I'm gonna go ahead and say T sub M minus S sub capital N. In other words, the capital Nth partial sum here. And we know that this like capital N was constructed on the last board. I'll let you guys look back at how we did that carefully plus S sub capital N minus A. Great. Now we'll apply the triangle inequality to say that this is less than or equal to the absolute value of TM minus SN plus the absolute value of SN minus capital A. Notice we know that this bit is less than epsilon over two by our earlier construction. Now I wanna write out what the terms from this first bit look like. So this is going to be less than or equal to the absolute value of, so this Tm is equal to B1 plus all the way up to Bm minus this Sn is equal to A1 plus all the way up to A capital N. And I guess I should say this is an equality here because I'm not actually changing anything between these steps. And now here we have plus absolute value of Sn minus A, great. Now what we wanna do is notice that here there are finitely many terms and by the way that we constructed A sub capital N and this capital M, which bounds the little m from below, we know that these terms start at A sub capital N plus one. Great. 
Now we can use this along with the triangle inequality to make another inequality and replace this bit which I have underscored in blue by the absolute value of a sub capital N plus one plus all the way up to the absolute value of a sub capital question mark where that is just some number bigger than or equal to n plus one and again we know that's a finite sum by this bit that we discussed before now i'll just go ahead and bring this down this is going to be plus the absolute value s sub n minus a great now by the cauchy criterion applied to the sum of the absolute value of the terms we know that this bit is less than epsilon over two and then by the fact that the partial sum Sn converges to A and all of our choices of this capital M and N and all that kind of stuff, we know that that is also less than epsilon over two, which makes the whole thing less than epsilon. And then again, looking at the extreme left and right hand side of the inequality, we have shown that the limit as m goes to infinity of t sub m equals capital A, which is the same thing as saying the sum of the bn terms also equals capital A. And that's a good place to stop.